Hello and welcome, I'm Bebo Joe, and this is a tutorial for the absolute beginner in Workers and Resources of the Republic. And we're going to play on a random map without realistic settings. We're just going to play on hard, but play whatever you want. Uh, make sure that you turn on Waste and Demolition because it's fun. I like to set my year of start to 1960, and then if you're a real beginner, please, please, please set your money amount to easy, just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. But everything else we're just going to leave, and everything besides money... You can adjust within the game itself once you get to it and you decide it's not for you to play that way. That's totally fine. So let's get started. First things first, press space or the pause button up here because it's important that you don't waste any time. Second, look at your map. Looks like this. If you don't like something about the map, go ahead, start a new one. It's totally fine. What do we actually need for a map to work? This is just a randomly generated map right here. The only thing we absolutely need is a road connection and a power connection and possibly a rail connection too. And you see that with the little dotted lines, that is a power connection and the solid lines are um, road connections or rail connections. What do we have here? A medium custom cells. That's beautiful. We're not playing realistic settings, so you don't have to worry about setting up all the constructions right away. But... It is helpful for having actually exports and some other things connected to a custom house because even without realistic settings, you have to worry about that. Now, something else. This, ser this is going to be a serious, and I will try to keep this video as short as possible. And anything else where you need more details, I will try to add them later on. It will all be part of the same playlist. So please, please, please ask questions below. I will try to predict some of the questions, but I'm sure I'm going to miss some. So if you have a question at the end of this video that's not answered yet, please, please, please ask me about it. So, we're going to start here. The map itself really doesn't matter, you just want to get somewhere started. Um, we have no resources shown on the map because you need research for that. If you don't like that, go all the way over here, click on game settings and turn on and off. Whatever you want, it's totally fine, you can play the way you like. But this is for the beginner, so I hope that won't be a huge issue. Then, um, I would recommend looking at the topography a little bit. You can press F2 or not to turn it on, and this is our starting area. What do we want to do here? We need an area where we can build a city, and then we need an area where we can build a little bit of industry. And I'm looking around here. There's some gravel opportunities right here that we could play with. Gravel is not a great starter industry. There's also more gravel down here, so maybe we don't have to worry about that. And there's a nice open space for industries right here. So what I'm going to do is show you how to set up this shortcut me uh, menu up here so press on the plus minus button to extend it we're going to go to a place where i don't have anything yet like this one and if you have an item for example dirt road which is down under vehicles then you click on or hover over road and then you click on the mud road if you play with this item a lot for whatever reasons you can just have this extended and click into it and now if i'm pressing escape now i'm pressing one the road is selected again this is true for anything that turns your cursor into this cursor with a little picture on it. You can move all of them. Some of them, like over here, the construction office assignment tool. You can also click on that and move that in here and now it's available. And I can switch between construction office uh, assignment tool and mud road if I want to. The construction office assignment tool is a little funky because you actually have to exit out of it because there are other sub selections in here that you also have to worry about. But that is um, just something really quick. I like to use this setup, but you set it up however you want. Cool. Let's build a road. Just a very simple road. And I think I want to end up somewhere here where I would like to build the city when we're done. So I'm just going to give myself a piece of straight line and then connect it up to this. Do whatever you want with the curves here. Try to keep it within two kilometers. If you go way too far away, at some point you're going to run into issues even on uh, without realistic mode because you do want to export your industry materials at some point. And we're going to get to that today, not with trains, but with everything else. So I just don't go too far away. Then we have this area. Great. With that area, and we're just building everything of Mud Road right now because it's it makes my life a little easier. Let's get the city planned. I don't want to get too close to this uh to that mountain over there. I want to be about 400 meters away, which is not quite here, but here feels like a pretty good spot. So I'm going to make a little bit of a gap in this area because the center of a city, I'm going to turn the, um, the topography off here. The center of the city is relatively basic. There are two things people like to go to every day. Thing number one is a station. A station is anything where they can wait. It can be a bus station or a train station and they will go to a place that has food. They will do that every single day and they will use a station like a bus station 
as an alternative to go somewhere if they can't find what they were looking for in walking range. So let's put that one in the center of town. That should be helpful. And then right across from that, I would like to place our first residential or first building that the residents will care about. Small shopping center. Only built the big one. This can handle about 7,500 people. Uh, all the other ones can handle a little less than that. So let's plop this down here. Also center of the city. And uh, that's our first start. Very simple. Something that I started doing recently is add a meat storage as well to the... Um, to the main shopping center it's just a little easier to keep up with your meat demands without this you, you may or may not run into issues so we're just going to add that as well cool there is our center of the city uh, organized wonderful we're going to add a couple nodes here nodes are this little purple thingies the problem with those is if you have to construct everything yourself uh, that can cause trouble but we're not going to get into that too much right now if you just want to play with auto build this is totally fine you don't have to worry about it so center of the city is done when you build something here make sure that there's enough room for a footpath build at least grab a footpath for everything and you want to leave this much room anywhere because footpaths extend your walking range quite a bit you can do up to 400 meters walking distance with a gravel path and uh, less with the mud path and more of the asphalt paths should make uh, sense for now so what else do we need in the center of the city? Very simple. We're just going to take all of these options and go uh, look down them. Just ignore the residential buildings for now. We're going to get to them later. We have placed our shopping center. Beautiful. We don't need a restaurant. We don't need a pub. A pub can be helpful later for uh, adjusting happiness, but it's a very small building, especially in vanilla. So you can probably place this if you want to later on as well. A cinema is responsible for helping with um, culture. So place this somewhere, it's in the culture menu. That's that's how it should help. Place this somewhere where you think it's nice to have and just leave it there. I'm gonna place one other building, a gallery of art because culture and attraction go hand in hand. And this building has an attraction score of something. Um, you can really pick any attraction building, also buildings within tourism, they all have some attraction and you can pick those and they're helpful for replacing religion because citizens will actually pick um, buildings with attraction values as a replacement for religious needs. It's funny, but it's the way it is. I like to place this one because it's a it's a simple building. It's relatively small. It does need a road connection, though, which is a little, little sad sometimes. But we're going to connect those. Not every building needs a road connection. Some, like the cinema, does not. Most residential buildings don't, but these buildings all do need a road connection. So make sure that you have that if it's needed. Another thing that we're going to build is a place for sport. This is literally just a place where they can satisfy their sport needs. It also has an attraction score, so this can also serve as a replacement for religion. Cool. Place that right here. Do you see those little blue dots there? That is just an indicator for how far people can walk on this mud road. You're going to be able to walk a lot further because we're going to place footpaths everywhere when we're done with this. Maybe don't place the other sport buildings because they have weather requirements at the very bottom. It has to be above 5 degrees, otherwise this one doesn't work. And you do want to have attractions that run all year round. So in your first city, maybe don't worry about those. Next thing, state infrastructure. Yay! Favorite parts for everyone. A hospital is very important. Place that somewhere where it makes sense to you. Um, give yourself enough room and they have to be able to reach everyone in the city either by road or by footpath. So somewhere down here south should be fine. Another building, super, super important, a fire station. Which size should you build? At least the medium size, so I'm going to use this one. I'm, I'm going to place it somewhat in the middle of where the city is going to be and where our industrial zone is going to be, which is out here, just so that hopefully our fire station can cover much of the industrial sector as well as our sector of the city over here. So that should be a little helpful. Great, got that one placed. Wonderful. Uh, kindergarten, highly recommend you place this later after you build your residential buildings because this one tends to overflow really easy, but children come in waves, so don't overdo it either. A school, this one doesn't overflow a lot, and just depending on what size of city you want to build, just pick a size and you should probably be okay. I'm just going to pick this regular size school and put it near, where should I put it? Just put it over here, near the bus station is really all I'm trying to aim for in this case. Uh, orphanage, you really don't need it unless you have a lot of escapes, but we'll get to that in a different video. Universities, absolutely need those because you need highly educated people, but you only need it within the first two years, which means you have a little bit of time to build this if you're strapped for money for whatever reason. So 
you can hold off on this, but you, most cities need a university um, l sooner or later. Police stations, just crime and justice in general. We do want these. It doesn't hurt you until you have 5,000 people. But once you do have 5,000 people, you do need to be prepared for that to actually work. So how about we get ourselves a little bit of a road. And actually, if I can, yeah, there we go. Can I make this another crossroad in the city so we have some more access to some other places? And we're just going to start building a police station or a police setup around this. How about we put it here? Because you do want a police station every once in a while also be available for reaching um, the industrial sector. The crime and justice system does not work if you only have one of the buildings. You do need all three of these. You need a police station, you need a courthouse, and you need a prison. Otherwise, from the police station, uh, people can't move to the courthouse and from the courthouse, not to the prison. So let's set this one up. Um, the crime and justice system is one of the most common death spirals in the game so i'm going to make another video on that one just to make sure that you get this all set up in an appropriate way that it will make sense and help you so we're just going to place these here and now our center of the city is pretty much done in terms of normal buildings if you play with waste and um, demolition turned on you will require a technical service officer it doesn't need any workers but you need to be able to move trash and this is the building that you want to do that with Sometimes you will see free buildings like this one. They're fine, but they have limits. You need them if you want to play realistic mode. You don't necessarily need them if you want to play without that on. So this should be fine. That's all of those buildings. We can skip tourism for now unless you want to find some other buildings for uh, attractions. So to replace your religious needs, but we don't need that at this point. Uh, trees and accessories have something very important, which is monuments. Monuments have two numbers. A percentage and a distance the percentage is not super important because it's just important that they have a net positive every day and most of the, per the all of these percentages will do that if the rest of your republic is fine um if you have the ukraine dlc this one's a great one 400 meters if you have researched off this one is 415 meters it's also great covers your whole city in one place we don't have that so we're going to build the one with the biggest range uh, available and you're probably going to build several of these in several different areas, hopefully around residential buildings. We're going to do that once we build some residential buildings, which is not next, because now we need to set up some networks. Uh, heating is the big one if you play with Seasons enabled. And just pick a place that looks like it gives you a lot of coverage, and you probably will end up building at least two heat exchangers in your city. So build them on a central spot uh, of your city i'm going to build one there and build one here and we should be lucky enough that these will cover most of your uh most of your city needs i'm going to move them a little further away because i would actually like um that little bit of distance there for the footpath again cool so now that we have this done um we can move on to the next utility which is what well water would be helpful but Water is really easy to place because they really have very small footprints, so we don't have to build those yet. However, however, electric substations are a different beast. These you will probably overload really, really fast, so just build a couple to get started with. They will help us build out our initial layout, and I'm actually just going to build two in each of these spots that are just across from each other. And they should give us a pretty solid starting point. Um, for getting going you may find that sometimes when you press the delete button and you click on this you will get this confirmation button and you cannot avoid that by holding the left control and clicking on it and then you don't get that uh, delete confirmation which i find uh, rather refreshing so use that when you can cool two substations right here and now it looks like everything in our city is covered and if you're not sure just just go back here and see what you're actually covering but we are covering all of the buildings so Next things next, we can actually look at our residential areas. There's a lot of stuff in here. I will tell you, build this one first. Quality of flats is a soft cap on your happiness. It's not the only thing that matters, but having a low quality of flats will severely hinder your uh, ability to build a functional republic. So that's what we're going to start with. And I'm just going to put a very simple angled setup here. And all I want is to make sure that we're in range of power and heat for whatever we're building and right now that looks fine i'm just using my um my mouse to make sure that we are in range of things and it looks like we're a little far away from that power line but that's okay 
So we're just going to build a couple more here. How many of these should you build? However many you want. There's no right and wrong answer to this. It's just a play the game however you want to play. Lay it out however you want to play it. This is just so that you can get started. Hopefully quicker than any other way um, that you tried before. So let's see. Put the last one here. That's fine. And now we have a bunch of buildings. How many did we build? Really not that many, but each of these houses about 150 people. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 times 150 is 2250, obviously. So that's all connected. That's great. I would like to continue this row just in case that we want it later on. There's a lot of space here. That's not a problem. Space is not a problem in this game. Give yourself as much space as you possibly can. Uh, because it will come back and you will thank me for telling you that you should do that later on. Now, the only utility that we don't have ready yet is water. Let's build a water substation somewhere that covers most of the area. Okay, how about we put one here? That's good. And then we put the next one just down the road here and we'll just see how, how that goes. Beautiful. Uh, once you build those buildings, also build a sewage tank and I like to place it close to where we just built those uh, water tanks or water substations. Uh, one big caveat, they have to be able to drain into a source of water, like this one, like a lake, uh, and they will produce pollution there. So wherever you point them, um, they will create some pollution uh, that you may or may not be aware of. So we're placing this one here, that should be fine, and we're going to place the other one here, just making sure that building is covered. Great, so um, we just need, yeah, this, this is actually a good space for it, so we're just going to plop that there. To drop your sewage, go over here. Um, generally, you will have trouble placing it right away, so you will have to do a little bit of terraforming, like this level of terrain. Sure, somewhere you just need a straight edge of some sort, and then plop down your sewage discharge right here. You do have the option to use the, um, the custom cells to drop off your sewage and your water. That's totally fine, but I think that will get overloaded pretty fast depending on how, uh, how big your city get, but it's about 2,000 people is your max, and once you pass that, there's just nothing you can do but build an actual infrastructure. And if you start with all the money that we start with right now, there's no good reason to go through that turmoil. Uh, something that will help you probably is use the tool for measurement right here and hover over where your sewage drains are. There's one here at 9 meters, okay. There's one here at also 9 meters. So we need to find a place that is lower than nine meters. Sometimes you won't find it right away. Use F2 to see your to see your contour lines or topography. And it looks like in this area on the left side, we're just a little bit lower. So you can build a quick sewage switch right here to get things moving. Just make sure it points, the exit points to the right direction. You can now go and change the uh, directions for your sewage switches if you want, or your sewage um, sources if you really want to. But this should be fine as well as this should be fine and then the last one just connects straight down to here and everyone should be happy water is at zero meters if you're if you were curious uh so that looks good f3 turns on the underground and above ground toggle and i use that a lot but you can also use the check boxes down here great so sewage is taken care of now we need water I would say you can build just a big water tower and that will take care of all your water needs and that's totally fine if that's the way you want to go. Um, places wherever you feel is appropriate, there's no right or wrong here, I'm just going to plop it here I suppose, okay. And you can purchase water within a water tower and that is totally a way to go, totally fine. I like to build my own water treatment plant because it's fun, but if you want you can start, uh, you can stop right here, purchase your water right there. And all you have to do now is distribute your water from the water tower. Use a water switch, at least one, multiple is probably more appropriate, to move all your water around. And the water pipes, um, if you have the money, always build the large one. Um, they are your only limit to how much water can be, um, well, used at a time in your city. Once, once these pipes are full, there's no more you can do. However, understand that if your input is uh, of size x and your output is of size x but two of them then at max you can only split that uh, that amount the same same is true for sewage so there is a limit to all of this that you should be aware of but this should be fine this will get us water 
Um, we're going to build the water treatment plant and those things later on. So what else do we need? We need actual heat connectivity, and that's important. So heating is down here. Heating plant, sure. How far should this one be away? It should be at least 750 meters away from your city. Otherwise, it causes a lot of pollution. So using this tool for measurement right here, plop it at the edge of your city where you think you're going to stop having residential anythings. And just hold down your left mouse button and see where you hit the 750 meters. So right there seems like a good place. It's also really close to the border. That's honestly a good thing in my book. Um, and let's just get us connected. If you don't like how it looks right away because the outlets of the heating pipes on the other side, press T and then you can press R and R to just rotate uh, by 90 degrees. And now it's pointing in the right direction. This looks fine. We're just going to use this and uh, move on. Heating pipes. Only use underground heating pipes. The above ground heating pipes do not work well if you have any distance to cover your heat loss is really high. This is a problem in the game. I it's, it's, it's a little hard to predict sometimes, but this one currently will not accept underground pipes. You could build a little bit of above ground pipe and then connect an underground pipe to that if you wanted to. Um, but it's kind of cumbersome and that's not what we're doing. So if you see this happening with your heating pipes, just remove it, build another one and um, it's, it's kind of random, which is quite annoying. Uh, pressing T again here, and then if you rotate it now, there may be problems. But at some point, you will be able to actually connect to these pipes. Cool, glad I showed you that. Uh, let's get this connected. I'm gonna guess we're running in. We're going to run into some uh, length dis length problems. It's about one kilometer that they can go um, continuously, but it looks like this one is fine. Cool. Let's look at the next one. Uh, you, can you connect to this thing? And I'm trying to keep them a little separated, so in case we're going to add a third building in the way, that's fine. If there's a building in the way, that's a really neat trick. Just press Q to go down a little further and see if you can get through here. And looks like we can get now under the building, and then you can connect. So it's beautiful. If you would not be able to connect this directly, use a heat pumping station. Use the large one, place it somewhere. All it needs is just a little bit of power, and then it will work just fine. You can just use this to extend your heating pipes almost indefinitely because the heat loss for the underground pipes is very, very minimal. So heat is here. We still need power. Power is the next thing on our list. Build a power transformer. Looks like this. Anywhere you feel is appropriate for your city. It really doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, we're going to place one right here because it's, it's kind of out of the way for other things that I want to do. Um, let's get a couple things connected. Here's a high voltage switch that can just go... Um, right here, I suppose. Sure. Then let's get a power line. It doesn't have to be the biggest one. 13 megawatts is probably fine. If you want, you can stretch it out like I just did. Then get a large power line, however large you want to go, and connect this to the border. This one is locked because of research, but this one should totally be fine. Let's get it all the way out to the border. And if you get into a situation like this, where you have a... Um, a rail line that you may want to use make sure that you have access to your rail line right now build electrified rail or build normal rail doesn't matter make sure that you just have access to it and if you do you should be totally fine if you don't want to build it right away you can go in and a cancel contract finish on your own um, so that they don't they don't build it once you unpause the game and that's important wonderful all of this looks fine now we just have to connect our actual electricity I have a couple options. You can run just normal power lines like this one, um, like this and there. And then this one connects to another one over on this side. You can make this as neat or as ugly as you choose. It's your game. So just, just do it your way. Now everything is connected. They're a little yellow and hard to see, but that should be fine. If you don't like that look, you do have the option to go underground with these voltage wires. Uh, let's press F3 run this over here and see our connections buildings in the way again press q q they increase the depth uh, which will cost you a little bit more money but generally these things aren't very expensive the problem with these things is that uh, they don't carry as much power as the above ground wires in comparison but we're just going to use these just so that you can see them so now we almost have everything done there's still some things you need to do go to your power import right here and set this to actually import 100% of what you need. Very important. You could build a coal power plant in the beginning, but you will need at least some power to get your industry or get your public kickstarted. 
and that's what we have done now that all looks good so now we should technically have heat we should technically have power we technically will get water from this water tower we have sewage already connected out here all of those things are super the only thing we have left is footpaths footpaths are a pain to build every once in a while but they're completely necessary and completely appropriate don't build anything besides a uh, at least a gravel footpath this one down here if you want to build the asphalt ones be my guest but at least go for gravel and what do you want to do is just make sure that everything is connected to the station to a road and to the shopping center and there's the shopping center and the row uh, so, so, sorry the shopping center and the bus station will both be connected and that's really what you need um, i'm just going to run this really quick Once you are sure that you've given everything a footpath connection, go to your outskirts, to the buildings where you're not 100% sure of, and go hover over the view building that can be reached on foot and check those numbers. Because if there's anything that can make it to the shopping center and to the bus station, you will have a problem. So this looks fine. They can get out there. However, right now they cannot walk to the hospital, which is right over here. And you can adjust that by just getting a footpath um, a little bit closer to the action, like so. Again, you can make this as pretty as you want, but now they can actually make it there at a relatively short distance. So that looks fine. And then what you want to make sure is that your bus station has connections to all the buildings that need workers, which we currently do have all of those covered. So that should take care of this as well. There are two more things. We're not quite done yet, but there are two more things uh, to take care of. Thing A, monuments. Now make sure that you can build monuments that actually cover most of these buildings. 145 meters. Feels like a lot, but it's not as much as you would like it to be. This should cover most of these buildings. That should be fine. Uh, and we're just going to use this single one just to make a point here to make it a little simpler. That one should obviously cover everything out there. Um, this one should also cover most of these buildings. Very nice. And then we just probably want one more somewhere in this area to cover the rest of all of this cool this should give you loyalty monuments do not stack monuments will give you max loyalty of 40 percent. just keep that in mind you need a radio station or a tv station combined with electronics to get more loyalty than that that's the first thing if you play with waste this is the last thing you want to take care of uh waste is very important because when it overflows it causes pollution which will call your whole uh, kill your whole republic and you want to avoid that so let's build the right buildings uh, if you only have footpaths available for whatever reason, which is totally fine, you have to use the small garbage stands like so. You can build it that you don't have to rely on the small garbage uh, garbage stands. That's totally fine. But if you only have these, use them. So uh, you see those little brown connectors? That just tells you how, what it can connect to. I would highly recommend building two of these each time, where one of them is only responsible for mixed waste and the other one is mixed waste and bio waste or something like that. It will make life a little easier for your garbage uh, garbage trucks later on. So let's just say these cover these three buildings. Then the buildings down here are still not covered. So let's get those in there as well. Get this one and this one. Looks like this one's just covered barely by a different building now, but that's fine. Continue what you're doing. Uh, again, two, two of the garbage stands will save you or will make your life a little easier for your uh, for your trucks later on. I'm more worried about covering the residential buildings with these guys. There are many, many different ways that you can place these. You can build everything more in a square and put the trash in the middle. However you want to do it is totally fine. Just make sure that you cover all of them is all I can tell you. So this one will cover that side. Uh, this one will cover also all of these. I think we have almost everything covered besides a couple buildings here and we can connect to those as well uh right here that's fine uh you can almost you can always add more footpath connections and make sure that things are more connected the way that you want them to um but if you don't have to that's also a good thing once you have all of these placed go to your more needed things one big one i will tell you is your hospital which is this one right now it's hard to tell but that's the hospital that one needs to be covered with a large container that can carry hazardous waste. If you don't have this, you're definitely going to overflow and you want to avoid that. Luckily, this garbage stand is also covering the hospital and this building right here. And it may even cover 
um, the the residential building over here. So that's those are bonuses, but that's not why you should build this in the first place. Here's another garbage stand that can go right here. It will cover a lot of stuff, but I would also like you to cover my um, my shopping center because it also creates larger amounts of waste. So this one covers this corner right here. That makes me happy. Um, let's keep going. This is mostly residential waste that you will see in this area, but sometimes um, you will still get a little more. So how about we put something here that covers um, the fire station and the... Uh, the prison right there. I don't think I have anything covering uh, these two buildings yet. And yeah, this this may be a little far away, but you get the point. You just place it however you want to place it and you should be fine. And I do think that we already have a trash container there that is covering these two buildings right here, but you rather have more than less. And for the big garbage containers, you don't need double coverage. A single coverage is totally fine because you can actually set the containers inside of the waste storage however you like okay do we feel like we can turn this on now almost don't do it yet if you want to press pa on pause don't do it yet there was something i didn't tell you in the beginning which is for your residential buildings when you place them there's another checkbox down here get citizens sometimes it's good to have that on sometimes it's not sometimes it's nice to be able to verify that all your things are okay if you place a building where this is on it will look like this get citizens is turned on you may want to turn that off for most of your buildings, or you may not. It's completely up to you. The thing is, it depends on how many clicks you want. I'm going to turn it off on just the buildings on the right here, because I don't want to go through all of them. Uh, but the rest of the buildings will just get all citizens, and they're going to fill up to whatever percentage was set there. It would be nice if there was a more global setting, but it looks about 75 or 60% is what they're going to be filled up as. So all the buildings on this side will fill up. Okay. Do we think we need anything else? I will tell you, I don't think so, but let's see. So unpause and see what happens. Everything just gets built slowly and it's really nice to look at all those things uh, coming through. And here's the thing that I would like to look at, these garbage stands. So you have mixed waste here and that's totally fine. I just wanna set this one to hazardous waste, about half of them, doesn't have to be a lot, but if you can get about, that, that's the wrong one. I meant bio waste, not hazardous waste, but do this on some of the containers while stuff is getting built. Um, it will help your efficiency a little bit. It's not completely necessary, but um, it will help and it's good. So get all of those done, get a couple over here done, and then we move on. They're taken care of. And then the biggest one, the most important one over here, at least allow yourself two hazardous waste, maybe even three for the hospital, because that waste is going to get overrun really fast. And if that happens, you're going to have a really, really, really bad time. As small things get done, just check a couple of things. This water tower may not have water purchased yet, so you may have to go in, purchase with rubles. Uh, manual purchase is just a one-time deal, and auto purchase just means it will try to keep it this full all the time. We're just going to set up to this amount, and as you can see, it will slowly fill up. And that is what you want to see. Any of the other buildings have issues? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. They just have to get built. As you can see, everything kind of moves along by itself. The meat storage does not have meat right now. That's more important for later when we want uh, to deliver our own meat, but that is fine. Let's look at our buildings. 102 workers in here and no workers in here. And as you can see, none of the utilities are quite ready yet, but that's okay. They're, they won't take long enough for our buildings to actually have trouble. So we can let all of this comp get completed and buy a couple vehicles. For example, uh, we need at least an ambulance. Otherwise, people have problems getting picked up by an ambulance. We also need at least, well, we don't need police yet, but we do need some fire vehicles. So let's get those bought. There's a speed on here. That is the number of workers that can be used. So now we have 46 workers uh, right there. Uh, we need some garbage trucks in this area. You have some small containers, so you need some of these garbage trucks, and you have some big containers, so you need some of these. You do have to tell them where to bring it. And that brings us to the next step. Wonderful. You want a collection station for waste. It looks like this, a transfer station. Um, it's nice to have this close by to your city, but also close by to where the final destination is going to go later on. We're just going to place it there, and we're going to tell our technical service to just bring everything there. And everything else should be transported with a distribution office. You will only have a free distribution office to get started, but that will do the things that you need to do for right now relatively quickly. So we can buy that and just get at least one large container, um, maybe even two, 
to get things going. So plop them in there. Another thing that we haven't done yet, which didn't even think about, is fuel. Some of your emergency vehicle or some of your stations, some of your buildings will have fuel already auto-purchased, and that is great. But not all of them will do that. For example, this technical service over here does not have that. Just to make sure that all of your buildings are covered, how about you just build a quick fuel station? Fuel station needs power, so make sure it's in range of a, a just some power connection somewhere. Plop that down. That will import fuel just fine. Check your shopping, your shopping center. Here we have food, clothes, electronics, and meat purchased already. That is fine. You can reduce electronics if you want to. The price level is only important for your uh, tourists, which we don't have right now. So all of this should be okay. Let's keep it building. You may see some warnings. In this case, temperature in building is too low. That is related to this guy. We currently don't have any workers here and we don't have coal. Let's fix that because you have to fix this anyways. We are in February, um, which means it's still cold outside. You want about 20 degrees. So let's fix all of this. Let's get some rubles first. Uh, sorry, some coal first with some rubles. So manual, um, sorry, automatic import is just like that. Then we do need electricity out here. Let's get an electric, uh, electric substation like that and run a power line out here. Honestly, it's not super important which power line we use for that. But since we want the industry to work in this area later, how about we use one of these switches for right now, get a super small wire connected to this thing and a large wire connected to our power station out here. It will help us later on uh, when we want to get more connections. So let's get this, this, this connected. And now we should see that all of this stuff has power. Building does not have drinking water. Okay. That's a bad one, but we can probably manage that as well. Since you're not playing realistic mode, I would just recommend you build a small water tower in this area. Otherwise, you just run a really long, um, a really long water line from your other source. And both is totally fine. You can connect that to this water tower too. Get a water substation like this. Make sure it connects to something, and then run a water pipe. Um, whatever size you want here to your substation and then you should be fine once this is all built there you go and get your purchase of resources now just a little bit of water and this one should be relatively happy it will still have a problem of sewage sorry i clicked that away really fast no workers once the workers will do something there will be sewage there and you will have to take care of that now you can choose to build another sewage network out here which i think is a better option again we're probably going to put an industry here, and that will be fun. Let's level out the side of the water again. Then get our sewage discharge right here until we can build it. There is one. Um, get a sewage tank somewhere in this area that has uh, this building in range. In this case, I'm actually going to have it point towards the lake or towards the river right there. Get your measuring tool out to figure what height we are. We're 12 meters here. This is going up. Interesting. Um, 16 meters that we're still going up and there's a little high high note right here this is clearly going down so we may have issues building a um, a switch a sewage switch somewhere in this area and that's fine because we can also do other things we can lower the terrain right here to just have a collection station seven meters should totally be fine get your plumbing get a sewage switch plop it right in here and then you can connect it with a nice small pipe because this building that we see here should never have a lot of sewage flowing through it. And then get that one connected to the building that we just placed down here. Beautiful. So that should be fine. Uh, F3 for underground, F2 for topography. Get this one built and now they should be happy. How are we doing over here? The shopping center is done, which is very important. Um, we should see some workers coming in if you zoom in a little bit. There they are. The first workers are arriving. There you go. You go in there and then you become a worker. You can choose to adjust the number of workers in here by clicking these two numbers or by clicking on this and setting it to some number that you like. We're pretty small, so 20 workers here should be fine. You can do that for every single building uh, because most of these do not need to be maxed out at the time that you start this. And your workers are effectively your most valuable resource so reduce the numbers in all of these buildings as much as you can so that later on um, you don't regret it. You want these people to work. You don't want them to just show up and do something here. 
So we can do that on all of these buildings. Great. Uh, the school is probably one where you don't want to go too crazy on resetting that. The court and prison are two where you definitely want to keep it relatively low. Fire station, you want to make sure that you have workers there. Otherwise, you have problems. Uh, the next thing, we haven't built them yet, is kindergartens over here. Build a couple. Uh, and when you build them, and this is probably a pretty good place for it because it looks like every residential building actually has footpath access to it, which is awesome because the kindergarten is the only building in the game that requires footpath access and cannot be reached by a bus station because children like babies that need to go to kindergarten generally don't go take the bus to the kindergarten. So make sure that this is all in walking range, which looks like it is. So we're going to plop that down here. And that should take care of all our child care needs for the game. Wonderful. Let's take care of the heating plant. Great. Uh, go down here, roads and vehicles, and grab a um, bus depot. It's right down here. Just a regular road vehicle depot. If you want this one, that's fine. You can also use the dirt one. It's a little cheaper. Uh, we're just going to build this. When that is done, everything else in the city should probably be done. Yeah, this one takes a really long time, that prison. You can save money by building a lot of this manually, but I'm avoiding showing you that right now because we're not playing realistic mode, and there's another tutorial for realistic mode that effectively takes at least two years to get you started. I'm trying to avoid that today. We are two days into the game. We just have already built a relatively free republic. Cool, let's get a couple buses to get some heat going. Um, down here in your menu, you can see what buses you have available. The eight and seven passenger buses are probably fine, uh, but later on you will need some other buses to move some more people around. So how about we do this? Give me one, two, three of these buses to run uh, simultaneously and set them up. And then I'll show you something else that will probably be pretty cool. Get this one over here, load and unload. You can select this however you want, the percentages, all those things, uh, what they're supposed to pick up and what they're not supposed to be uh, to pick up. And then I'm just going to tell it to go here. And I'm going to tell you to start. Great. Uh, game is paused. Doesn't work. You can click on this copy schedule over here, or you can click on view line details. Now you see the actual arrows that tell you where this vehicle is going, what vehicles are on it. They have the little green shine around it. And you can click on this and select more vehicles. You can either just left click like this, and then this vehicle is assigned, or you can left control and click to launch the vehicle right away. You can also launch them from right here by clicking the little start flag, or you can launch them from right here. The thing that will pop up is line detail. Line spacing is disabled. You can enable line spacing, but if you use line spacing, they may drive really slow on the road to just make line spacing happen, and that's not super helpful. Instead, I would recommend building a line end station. Bus end station looks like this. Uh, there are a couple, several different sizes. Really don't care which one you want. Uh, definitely don't build a trolleybus one, but uh, this end station or the smaller end station should totally be fine. Just going to plop that right here. Actually, we're going to plop that right here because a power connection is very good to have for this because buses can actually refuel in here. So we're going to plop that down, um, tell them to purchase fuel, and then um, assign the buses that we have here. And here's something very important. You can technically change the stop for the buses that you have here, but if you do that, you're only going to change it for that one bus. You don't want that. You want to go to the line, and on the line, you want to see, okay, this is the first stop, this is the heating plant. Once you get to the heating plant, I would like you to stop here um, and refuel and just wait. And this one will now enable variable time bus spacing um, automatically without buses ever slowing down. And we'll just send the bus when it's time, but then the bus will go 100% of the speed, which is important. We're almost done. Uh, the last thing that we need is road upgrades. I have everything as mud roads just in case you want to change something after you do XYZ. Um, and if you don't, then you can go ahead and upgrade roads. In realistic mode, I will always tell you build a gravel road. It's probably fine for the first 10 years, then you want to upgrade it slowly. In this mode, where you don't have to worry about that stuff, build an asphalt road. It's faster. It's better. How can you do this? You can either select the road and just drag whatever you want to upgrade. That takes forever, but that is fine. You can also hold left shift and just drag like this over everything that you want to upgrade, which is all of this. Let go, and it will magically and automatically just upgrade every single piece of road. 
In realistic mode, this is much more complicated because the roads are actually closed when you do this and when you do the upgrade, it takes a very long time. So you need multi-access roads for everything, but we're not in that mode. So buses are actually still running on this. And once this road is done, this bus will go full speed and life is pretty good. So once this bus arrives, our heating plant should turn on and uh, create enough heat for the city that we have, which should make everyone happier. But because right now our happiness is relatively low because our health is relatively low, uh, because of many reasons. They didn't get food right away. They had a couple other problems, etc., uh, etc. Et and that is okay. Um, it will figure out how to solve all those problems in just a second. So the heating plant is on right there. It's running at 100%. It's filling up this uh, heat tank. And in about one minute from now, people that had some problems, and they're really not a lot, will be very happy. Let's go faster speed to make sure that actually happens. And here we are. People are relatively happy. They should not leave anymore. And this number should be fine. Alcohol addiction when you invite people is relatively high. Don't worry about that one. It also hurts your health. Government loyalty will continuously fall. But everything else we should be able to take care of. So people are here. They're going to be able to do some sport. It will just take a couple days until they uh, manage to get into it. We also have only 950 people right now. That's fine. Whenever you want more, you just go in here and say, I want 10 immigrants from the uh, Soviet bloc. I want five immigrants from uh, as experts that come in here and actually can teach my uh, students or that can be a doctor in, in here. Apparently we have some heating problem or we have some health problems. So we're gonna increase the number of workers that we allow here. And this is a great start. A couple more things that you have to check. Go to your monuments and see what the actual influence radius is. And as long as you have every building covered by one of these monuments, you should be in a pretty good spot. You just wanna make sure that that's actually the case. And if I remember right, this influence radius is by, um, by as the crow flies not by walking distance but i may be wrong on that so that looks fine but currently our health is actually still not great because i'm sure our trash cans are slowly but surely overflowing um waste separation yeah they, they can't actually do this yet it's all mixed waste that's right you do have to research um separating waste but it looks like they are able to do the normal composition so the research of separation for bio waste is hidden inside a university now these guys are not doing anything yet because we haven't told them what to do. Uh, we're just going to assign all of the ways to here. And you should see them start moving uh, once they find a place that has uh, trash assigned. And these guys, the distribution officers, we just have to tell what we want them to do. Go here, load your waste, and unload it over here for right now at the customs house. It's not a good way to go, but you have to start somewhere. Uh, and I think that is the end of this part of the tutorial because there's more to do. Next thing I'm going to do is the first industry, make a little bit of money and get rid of waste more effectively. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.